What is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a small device used to control other parts of an electronic system that it is built into. If you've ever used an electric toothbrush, a keyboard, a television, or pretty much any electrical device, you'll have used something that has a microcontroller inside. Unlike general purpose computers, like Raspberry Pi or your laptop, microcontroller boards like your Raspberry Pi Pico don't necessarily come equipped with things like wireless internet, full-sized USB, or operating systems for everyday use. Instead, microcontrollers are much more paired back devices, which typically use a combination of a processor, small amounts of memory, and some onboard peripherals to carry out instructions given to a larger system. They are usually much smaller and cheaper than a computer, and they usually use a lot less power. They are great for specific defined tasks, whereas a computer can carry out a wide range of different tasks. To help you understand better, let's break down a Raspberry Pi Pico. Raspberry Pi Pico uses RP2040, a microcontroller chip designed by Raspberry Pi. This is the part of the board that does all the heavy lifting and contains a processor and 264 kilobytes of memory, which, compared to most microcontrollers, is actually quite a large amount. This memory is important as it executes the programs that are sent to it. All of the instructions in the form of code that you give your Pico will be processed in the chip with the resulting output communicated to the electrical contacts known as pins on either side of the board. These pins are called GPIO, or General Purpose Input and Output. Connect header pins to these, and you can use them to easily control things like LED lights, buzzers, sensors, and displays. You'll find the pin numbers on the back of your board, but we've also supplied a diagram you can access and download online with all the pin numbers for you to reference. These bumps you see on the outside of the board are what are known as castellations. These allow you to solder the board directly onto other circuit boards for more complex projects. You'll also notice three small pins at the bottom of your board. These are debug pins used for finding errors in your programs. Starting off, you may not use these very often, but as you write bigger and more complex programs, they may prove useful. At the top, you'll find a micro USB connector. This is used to power your Pico via your computer or battery pack, and is also how you write programs onto your Pico from your computer. Simply connect a micro USB cable to your Pico and the other end to your computer. Finally, just below the USB port is a button marked boot cell. Holding this down while plugging your Pico into your computer will make it show up like a hard drive or memory card. Opening this will let you navigate to the Getting Started with Pico page by clicking on the index.htm file. Now that we know what the parts of the board do, how do we actually get it to do things? Amongst other options, Raspberry Pi Pico supports MicroPython, a beginner-friendly programming language based on Python. If you've ever used Python before, MicroPython will seem pretty familiar. If you're just starting out, check out the book Get Started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico from Raspberry Pi Press. To install MicroPython on your Pico, you'll need to download what's called a UF2 file from the Getting Started page linked from the device. You'll find this under the MicroPython tab. Then, once you've found your downloaded file, just drag and drop it onto your Pico. Your Pico will then reboot and will be ready for you to write your first program. You'll find out more about your Pico and everything you can do with it on the Getting Started page and at raspberrypi.org.